Uh, hey, Frank, you had a, a couple uh, contributors have bigger nights than they normally have been having this season. Mark Gasol and Marquise Morris. What do their performances say about the collective group effort it's going to take to get through whatever time that you don't have AD? Yeah, we've got a lot of good players, and th those two are uh, – are definitely uh, you know, two of them. Um, those guys were really good tonight. Um, you know, Keith in particular knocking out some big threes. But Mark being a little more assertive offensively. Obviously, he's out there with with AD and Brian a lot, and he's he's thinking facilitate. Uh, he's so selfless, um, you know. But during this stretch, we're going to need everybody to pick up this the slack uh, just a little bit. And uh, you know, those those two guys did just that tonight. Mike, shoot out. Sorry about that. I got, got the old Zoom mute there going, Frank. Uh, my bad. Hey, uh, Frank, just wondered if it, it struck, strikes you in a certain way. You see Anthony Edwards talking to LeBron. He was two, you know, when LeBron was the number one pick. And, and here LeBron is on a night like tonight again doing his thing and, and how that hit you. <laughs> he was two years old. I didn't realize that. But, uh, you know, you're seeing that a little bit. Um, you know, obviously with Bron, Bron being his 18th year, you see it in football, obviously with the Super Bowl with Brady and Mahomes. Um, you know, it's just a testament to uh, to what Bron's doing at this point in his career. Um, you know, still playing at such a high level, and you know, these young kids are coming in and they get the opportunity to play uh, and play against Bron. So it's 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 a uh, you know it's fun for those guys, and you know I think uh, LeBron's enjoying you know the challenge of seeing these young guys coming in. And Frank, I guess LeBron aside, if, if there's any amount of fatigue from the shortened offseason, have you seen stuff like with, with Schroeder and Harrell and Wes and Mark, kind of the energy that they brought in that like tonight, and, and maybe that was part of the idea in, in the first place with Rob and everybody bringing those guys in? I, I wonder how that played out tonight. Yeah, we wanted to have a deep team this year, um, you know, because we weren't mm -hmm. sure about uh, what kind of COVID losses we would have from time to time. Um, you know, obviously uh, the, the short offseason, um, you know, we, we knew it was going to be a concern uh, with potential injury. And, you know, uh, I like I like what we have uh, to go to war with, you know, in this stretch where we're going to be uh, without Anthony Davis. Um, you know, we got to have a deep team and you know, got a lot of guys on this roster I believe in. So, uh, you know, we're going to uh, have the mindset we got to continue to win every night, every time we take the floor and um, we started strong tonight. Hi. Hey Frank, sorry, I was just thinking about uh, how, how old I was when Anthony Edwards was two. Um, uh, with Cat, obviously he had a good efficient shooting night, but only 15 points from him. Um, how'd you feel about how you guys um, just kind of kept the ball out of his hands, especially late? And does that bode well, do you think, for um, just, to, just how you'll cover a good big man without AD? Yeah, well, you know, there's two parts of it, right? I mean, a guy like Cat can hurt you in so many different ways. Uh, I thought Mark uh, really, really competed and uh, in, in terms of the low post action, and communicated well when we needed to, uh, you know, switch switch out on a on a three point attack, and our guards really listened up. We didn't do a good enough job with Joker, and uh, and even with Horford before that, uh, and, and in some ways Valanciunas. Um, but our guards were really locked into getting back out to the three-point line of Towns. And when he came down inside, I thought Mark was terrific uh, in that matchup. And, and even Trez competed well uh, in his minutes and, and, you know, when they were matched up together. So, so both centers uh, did a really good job tonight on, on uh, the big fella. Uh, BT? How you doing, Frank? Good, good, BT. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Uh, I'm just wondering... Um, what were your conversations like with the team once you guys found out E.D. wasn't going to be playing? And what is it like to see LeBron James just to continue to play at this level? Yeah, conversations with the team were, um, you know, we're going to attack this stretch of games, you know, and, and be confident in what we have uh, on this roster, uh, embrace the challenge of, of playing out, of without A.D. and that it was going to be a – you know, every every guy's got to step up, not not just the next man up, but you know we have to do it by committee. And um, I think you saw that tonight. And you know, in terms of watching Bron every night, uh, he just uh, continues to to impress and uh, you know do things that you know, guys are not supposed to be able to do uh, at this point in their career. So um, still playing at an extremely high level. Uh, big reason for the win tonight. Uh, Dan. Frank, do you think with a, a player like Mark, and, and obviously as he's gotten older, minutes have diminished for him, but to get extended run tonight, did you see a better rhythm 
just in general from him uh, on both sides of the court, uh, being out there. Definitely. Um, you know, he's a, with a new team and a, you know, a, a unique situation playing with uh, two big time stars and, and Bron and AD. And, uh, you know, the early part of the season, he's really just to his credit, just trying to fit in um, in the minutes that he's getting. And, we, you know, we know we slide AD over to the five a lot um, late, which leaves him out of the game. Uh, so, you know, I think it, it has been a difficult at, at certain times uh, to really catch a rhythm. But you know, I think you're going to see during this stretch of games that, that him and Trez are going to man the five position at a very, very high mm -hmm. level. And, um, you know, I think they're off to a great start tonight. Last question, Brian Kamenetsky. Hey, Frank. Um, what is the, the value for guys, you know, taking on larger roles offensively, larger roles defensively with AD out, even with sort of the understanding that when he comes back, those roles get smaller again in some ways? What, what, what can be gained both for those players and for the team? Yeah, well, every, every extended run that a player could get, whether it's, um, you know, guys like KCP or Kuz that were in the starting lineup tonight, uh, or guys like Trez, Mark, Keith getting to be, being able to get back in there. You know, Keith's numbers are not great this year, but you know he, he's been uh, limited in his opportunity. You know, I, I really believe that if he's been playing big minutes all, all the way through here, uh, you know, he'd be playing the way he did tonight. He's a heck of a basketball player, a big reason well in the championship last year, and um, you know, all these guys that are gonna you know get a little extended run here. Uh, more opportunity uh, are going to catch a better rhythm that they they may not have been able to get. Um, you know, when we're at full strength. So, you know, it's a silver lining thing. Uh, but the key is that, you know, we, we really just got to have a no excuse mindset and continue to go out and win games each night.